In Jesus' name, we honor you. Asante, you may be seated. Glory to God. Go with me to the book of um, 1 Samuel. I want to talk about mothers. And there is a mother I love so much in the Bible. 1 Samuel, chapter 1, NIV, if you put it on the screen, I don't have to read mine. The Bible encourages us to honor mothers. In Ephesians 6 verse 2, the Bible says, Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. When you honor mothers today, it means that we are fulfilling a certain promise. Uh, First Samuel, First Samuel chapter 1, uh, NIV, the Bible says that there was a certain man from Ramathaim, a Shufite from his from hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jer- Jeroham, the son of El- Elhim, Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Shev, an Ephraimite. Continue. He had two wives. And one was called Hannah, and the other one was called Penina. And we know about the story of Penina. And Penina had children, but the Bible is not telling us how many sons and how many daughters. But Hannah had none. Please continue. Years after year, this man, this man went up from his town to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, uh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli, the priests, uh, uh, the priests of the Lord, continue. Uh, wherever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give a portions, double portion. He would give double portion to Hannah. That's verse 4. Whenever the day came, whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of meat to his wife, uh, Penina, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion. Please underline that because we'll talk about that today. He gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once, when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Uh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the, Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you only look on your servant, uh, servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. You better say amen. amen. Now, I want to talk about uh, this uh, wonderful woman. Uh, because mothers, 
are compassionate, like I said. Mothers are selfish, they are sacrificial, mothers are nurturing, and they are so unique. And that's why we are here to celebrate uh, mothers today. Mothers are integral part of the kingdom of God. And there are some categories of mothers that I want to uh, mention here and uh, probably just speak on one category and talk about that. Number one, um, there are groups of mothers. Uh, one, those who lost their mothers through death. There are mothers here who lost their mothers through death. Number two, those who had painful relationship with their mothers. Mothers who had painful relationship with their moms. And sometimes they don't know how to handle the mother's day. Sometimes they don't know how to bear the pain that they still go through. And we want to talk about that this morning. Uh, number three, there are those who uh, were abused and abandoned by their moms. And sometimes they don't even want to hear about a mother's day because they don't know how to handle it. They have never been able to handle the day that is called Mother's Day. Amen. And I want to tell you the history of Mother's Day. Uh, this thing started about 107 years ago. More than, a, probably more than 107 years ago. And it was made uh, a unique day in the U.S. One woman championed for this uh, so that we can honor mothers. Number four, there are those uh, mothers who are not yet mothers but struggle to bear a child. Did you hear that? Those who have not given birth, but they struggle. Like Hannah, she struggled because there was something on her inside. And it was beyond her control. There is nothing that she would have done about it. The hand of God was upon it. Nobody would have solved this situation here. Then number five, there are those who lost their children through death of miscarriage. And sometimes we don't understand when we talk about mothers. There are women who go through pain of losing their dear, uh, the gifts that God had given them. Either they were born, still born babies, or through miscarriage. These are mothers that we want to honor today all over the country, all over the face of the earth. These are mothers out there that we want to speak a blessing uh, to God about them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There are those uh, mothers who are single mothers who raised uh, the children without the father's support. That is a great woman that need to be recognized by the society. That is a great woman that need to be applauded in our days. Sometimes we don't appreciate uh, such women. And this day, I want us to appreciate and to celebrate uh, such mothers. Then there are those mothers who never had a chance to become a mother. Maybe they never got married. And therefore they never had a chance to become a mother. They've kept it pure and have walked a journey with God. We celebrate such mothers. Then there are those who are spiritual mothers. Maybe they have their own children, but they also have another responsibility of spiritual mothers. But from the portion of our scripture, I just want to identify three characters uh, 
Elikana or Elkana had his two wives, Hannah and Penina. Penina had children, but we are not told how many, like I said there earlier, and Hannah had none at all. Now, my question is today, how did this man handle two women when today there are some men who are not able to handle one? But this one handled two. Mm. And one was a noisemaker in the house. One was a provoker. One was a schemer. Well, she was a fighter. <laughs> but the woman I want to choose is Hannah. And I want us to celebrate Hannah because no matter the pain that Hannah went through, she never opened her mouth to complain. No matter the humiliation she went uh, through, she never opened her mouth to say something about her co-wife. And that is actually our point number one, that Hannah went through humiliation of something that was beyond her control. Number one, the, the, the humiliation that I'm talking about is about a Penina's provocation. It's about Penina's intimidation. Huh? And as I was uh, preparing this uh, message, I was thinking of how Penina would poke her fingers on Hannah's, you know, and call her all sorts of names. Mm. Penina is a fighter. Huh? You silly woman, you can't even give birth. You can't ever even give a child to my husband. You woman snatcher. You husband snatcher. She's that kind of a woman. She has a loose mouth. She provokes a woman <laughs> who is so meek, who is so broken. A woman who can fight nobody. She, because Hannah doesn't know how to fight back. You know the story of Peninas. And for many years, she kept on doing this to her co-wife. And let me call her her other sister. She had no regard for her. And some of us, we came from uh, homes, uh, you know, uh, that are polygamous. And we saw how our uh, grandparents behaved. My Guka had three wives. My Shosho was the first, the first wife. But one thing that I remember is that her co-wives respected her so much. They never had a fight. They never had a struggle. They respected each other. That's who they were. The others came and found her there, so they honored her. But we don't know who came here after who, you know, between Hannah and Penina. Hannah is an example of a good leader who demonstrates the power of persistence. The power of prayer. Because no matter how long you have prayed and you have not come to a place of breakthrough, I tell you, child of God, your answer is about to manifest no matter what pain you go through. And I kept on praying year after year. Hannah is an object of cruel mocking by her other wife. And I want to ask a woman here or a mother here, how would you have behaved if it were you? <laughs> I saw a cartoon the other day of how wives behave when a husband comes home and he, he's angry. The Tanzanian, <laughs> the Ugandan are very humble. Huh? They are very humble. <laughs> this is my husband, please, I'm sorry. They can even go to an extent of kneeling down. 
The Tanzanian are also like that. <laughs> but the Kenya woman, <laughs> bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. This is the penina that we are talking about. Uh, bring it on. I'm ready for you. <laughs> Show me what you are made of. <laughs> Hallelujah. How would you have behaved? <laughs> Mothers who are here, if you are in such a situation, would you be like Hannah? <laughs> I want to say something that not at any time did Hannah open her mouth to complain, either to Penina or to her husband or to any other person in the community because they went to church year after year and even in the church she will be provoked, but she never, she never, she never confided her problem to any other person, not even the husband. And that's why we see here in the story, the Bible says that uh, the husband gave Penina just a portion of sacrifice, but to Hannah, he gave a double portion. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? So Hannah went through or oh, Hannah endured humiliation of something that was beyond her control. Number B, God had closed her womb. It was the hand of God. It was the hand of God. Even if her womb wanted to carry a baby, the hand of God had shut the womb. And I want to ask mothers today, how do you complain over a condition that you have no control about? Why complain and mama over a situation that be, is beyond your limit? Children are gifts and a blessing from God. And sometimes in our journey of faith, we have to move on and accept the pain and the humiliation that we go through. It's a fact. As we go along in our journey of faith, sometimes we have to accept the pain and the suffering that we go through. But if we keep our hope alive and we have great expectation, we know what the word of God says, that the expectation of the righteous will not be cut short. You can be a mother here that is expecting to get a baby and you have waited for such a long time, but I want to promise you that God is not a liar. When he says something, he will do it in the name of Jesus. Mungu akisema ndio hakuna mtu mwingine hata anaweza sema la. I love that song. Ndio yake ni nini? Ni ndio. Na hakuna atakaye pinga. Hmm? That is the God we serve. I don't know. There are things that happen in life that you cannot control. Am I speaking to mothers today? God blessed Hannah with the double portion because she had the ability to endure something that was, that had, she had no control of. God has shut the womb. Can I make myself a mother? While the hand of God is upon my womb. We celebrate such women because of the pain, because of the endurance, because of the persistence, 
because of the faith that they go through. Hallelujah. And I want to say this, that don't spend time complaining about things that are beyond your control. You know, sometimes in life, we complain of things, that things that happen in our lives, that some of them we contributed to their happening. Because we made certain choices in life, and therefore certain things manifested. Why complain for things that you are accountable for or about? Don't spend time complaining about things that are beyond your control. Hannah could have complained about Penina, the hand that humiliated her, the hand that mocked her, the hand that ridiculed her. But I think Hannah, she was not a selfish woman. She was not self-centered. Hannah is a great woman. Hannah learned to deal with issues instead of complaining. And that's a lesson that we are learning from this great mother. Dealing with issues instead of complaining. In Kenya, we have become a complaining nation. A murmuring nation. We are not the first one. The Israelites in the desert, they complained. They, they even ask a question, is God well able to deliver us? It was even better we would have stayed in Egypt. We had a better lifestyle there. Is God able to do one, two, three? They were a nation of complainers. May God deliver us. I say may God deliver us in the name of Jesus. If you can't deal with something, then stop complaining about it. Amen. God never puts you in a situation that is beyond your ability to deal with that issue. If God puts you in that particular situation, it's because he knows you can handle it. And he knows if you cannot handle it, he will make a way of escape. Because God is not bringing you into this place so that you can be destroyed by that situation. But so that you can be made to become a better person in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So God never puts you in a situation that is beyond your ability to deal with. You can deal with it. Tell somebody you can deal with that situation, mother. You can deal with this situation, daddy. Come on, tell them that. At no time did Hannah complain. She knew she was being dealt by a hand she could not change because God had shut her womb. Do you consider sometimes when you have prayed and you have prayed and you have prayed and you're not seeing a miracle coming forth? Do you ask yourself sometimes whether the hand of God is in it? Hannah was this mother that believed God for a child for such a long time. And yet, we are told the hand of God was upon her. Something she had no control about. Hallelujah. Number two, she did not respond negatively to her humiliation. Look at this mother. Year after year, She's humiliated by her co-wife. But the Bible is, I mean, uh, the word of God is showing us that she did not respond negatively. A lot of us would have responded negatively. She did not react to the wrong things that were done to her. We celebrate mothers like Hannah who keep hope alive and expect things to turn around for their good. We celebrate such mothers today in the name of Jesus. Penina made fun of her, uh, but she knew 
she can't change it. Hannah waited patiently for the hand of God to be removed so that she can begin to enjoy the miracle again. She waited patiently for God. Hallelujah. We celebrate Hannah because of what the, she could have done, but she refused to do it. Like the Kenyan woman. Tenina, today we are settling it today. Hmm? We are settling it today. Hmm? Hannah would have hurled insult back to the co-wife. And if she was the one who had come earlier, and because she was not able to bear children, because in those days it was a disgrace for not bearing a child. And even if you got children and you got girls, it was not considered anything anyway. Because they valued a boy child. So now Kamere will be walking looking down. Because he got only girls. Hmm? This woman never reacted negatively. There were things she could have done. She could have gone back in the kitchen and come out with knives and said, let's settle it now and forever. Hmm? If I'm going down, we are going down together. Hmm? If I can't have him, you will not have him either. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do I have strong women here? <laughs> Do I have women who are fighters? Hmm? Hmm? If it was another woman, they would have begun. I cast her in the name of Jesus. She never cast Penina in the name of Jesus. If it is others, I cast you in the name of Jesus. Fire, 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 fire. She never cast her in the name of Jesus. Look at the character of this woman of God. Look at the character of this mother. Look at the, the nature of this woman. If it is others, <laughs> go in the bedroom of Penina, remove everything, throw it outside. And uh, if you have an opportunity, get petrol, pour petrol and burn everything. Kiumane, kiumane. We celebrate Hannah because of the things she could have done, but she refused to do it because of the God that she carried on the inside. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Such mothers ought to be applauded and appreciated in our society. <laughs> she never fought back. She never cast her. Mm. She never cast Penina's children. Mm. Cast you even your children. Your children will become nothing. <laughs> He's a great woman. He's a great mother. And I want to celebrate you mothers. Because this is how all mothers should aspire to be. Hannah had her strength in the place of prayer. Later on, if you go and you read verse 12, she continued praying. The baby has not come. 
but I continue to pray. Because my baby is not just a baby. Hmm? Let me tell you women who are here, and God will give you an opportunity to bring forth kids. Don't just bring kids. Hannah wanted to bring a child who will become a judge of our nation and a prophet of our nation. Hmm? Yeah. Mongedo is as a result of parental failure. Hmm? This one has a vision that the child that you will give me, oh God, I will give back to you. Hannah lived a surrendered life that she wanted nothing but to promote the kingdom of God. Let me tell you, if that miracle is valuable, it may take some time to come. Because we normally say, is it calm? Things that got an easy don't have much value. Hmm? Hannah continued in prayer to the point that the man of God mistook her prayer with being drunk. The priest is asking her here in verse 14, how long will you be drunk? Put away your wine and strong drink. We want to celebrate mothers like Hannah because they never even drank wine. Neither strong drink. This is what made her unique. She's being accused of something she doesn't even know how to handle. She has never drunk wine. She doesn't even know how it tastes. She has not even drunk. We serve such women who keep themselves poor, pure. That is Hannah. And finally, number three. She never failed to ask and to believe God. That's why we celebrate her. Although her pain, all through her pain, she never stopped asking God and believing for what she petitioned. Every year, she would go to the house of God at Shiloh with her double portion that has been given by her husband, she would tell God, Lord, remember my petition. If you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. In her pain, she kept her fervent prayer life and talked to God. There are some times Mothers, when we go through pain, we forsake prayers. We discard it. We don't want anything to do with it because it looks like God has failed us. But Hannah in her pain, and that is why we are celebrating her. She kept her fervent prayer. Let the other woman mock me. But I know whom I have believed. And he who began a work in me is able to bring it to completion. Hmm. Hallelujah. No matter what you go through in life, draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. And if you do that, if you do so in due season, you will get your double portion like Hannah. If you faint not, Hannah did not allow herself to become 
a, a weakling. Hannah never allowed herself to faint at any time. How many knows that those who wait upon the Lord shall have expectations of miracles manifesting in their days and in their season in the name of Jesus. Hannah kept on moving to the altar year after year and God made her a mom finally. So what is the difference between this mother and mothers who just try it the first time and they get babies? What I see here is that this woman has struggled to get this child. So when the child comes, she will value the child differently. She will mentor the child differently. She will inculcate value system differently. And somebody here today, you need to know that God sees your dilemma, the pain in your life. God sees that. Mm. There is a woman here with such a pain this morning. But God sees your pain. You are full of tears like Hannah. Maybe you have children, but you still have pain. But God sees your dilemma. I say God sees your dilemma in the name of Jesus. I say God sees your dilemma. That situation that you don't have power to change, God can change it for you. And that goes the same for fathers. That situation that you don't have power to change, only God can change it in Jesus' name. Now, I want to ask a question as I come to a close. Whose attitude would you choose today? Mother Hannah or Mother Penina? And you may be asking, but Pastor, we are men and you have not talked to us. Elikana is also very important. Because Edikana here in this story represents something. But whose attitude would you choose? Penina is a blessed woman by God, but she is self-centered. She has no concern for anybody else. It is me and I, what I can do for my husband. I don't care about any other family. What you're going through, that's your own story. You can keep it yourself. She's selfish, self-centered. She doesn't care. But Hannah has not received much, but she's persistent in prayer, waiting to get something which she would dedicate back to God that would touch the lives of many people. These two women are different. Hannah lived a surrendered life and that's how she got a double portion from God. Now, men who are here and you tell me you've talked about women too much, what about El Elkanah, the husband? He represents a God who gives to the one he loves. Elikana here represents God who is so loving, a God who is so compassionate, a God who is merciful. Because, listen to this, why did he give Hannah double portion instead of giving the double portion to a woman who had many children. 
God is not a respecter of persons. God doesn't give you because of what you have. But he can see beyond and he can see the heart. Sees the heart. Ericana represents a God who says, don't be consumed with what you want, but recognize that you have me. You have me. Isn't that what Elkanah told the wife in verse 12? Why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? So God is saying, don't be consumed with what you want, but recognize that you have me. Am I not better than ten sons? Am I not better than ten sons? This is a God 